up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be doing the match preview for Real Sociedad versus Barcelona in La Liga. We are back in action. I'm very, very excited for this match, but also very, very nervous. Three points. Anything less will be a catastrophic failure. We could not drop points in our second match in La Liga after we dropped you know, two points in the first match. Of course, Real Sociedad, one of the toughest opponents in the league. It is a must win for Barcelona, no matter what. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 200 likes this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Kickoff time for this match will be taking place at 10 p.m. local time, so one hour later than usual, and this match is taking place at the Anoeta. Now you could say the curse of the Anoeta is now over. We've done very well there, I would say, over the past five years. But of course, with the curse, it can always come back and linger. So keep that in mind. The new stadium as well. It will be packed. It will be roaring, ready to go, and to put a lot of pressure on our players. And also, the referee for this match has also been confirmed. On the pitch will be Jose Luis Montero, and on the VR it will be Jose Luis Gonzalez Gonzalez. Let's start off by taking a look at the league table. Barcelona are currently sat in 11th place in La Liga on one point. After playing one match, we have one draw. Of course, right now, too early to tell the reason I'm bringing the, the league table. It's just so you guys the results from last weekend. Atletico Madrid won by three goals. That puts them on three points. Real Madrid won by one goal, three points. Sevilla, though, have lost last weekend. They lost, and also they played yesterday as well, dropping points. So Sevilla so far, a loss and a draw in their first two matches in the league. They have not started off too well, and this could be a big advantage for the other teams. And you take a look at the other teams who will be facing this weekend. Of course, like I said, Sevilla drew 1-1-3 one, one, by the lid yesterday. But Real Madrid will be traveling to Celta Vigo. That's always a banana skin for us. But for Real Madrid, that's always been a comfortable win for them. I can't remember the last time Celta Vigo even took points off of them. But here's a big one. Atletico Madrid versus Villarreal. That'll be a big game, of course, outside the top four because Villarreal are probably one of the top two, top three teams outside that top four bracket. They will be very, very difficult to break down. But again, Atletico Madrid are at home, so keep that in mind. But I see nothing but three points for Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid, which means that Barcelona have to win. We're already, you know, two points behind. If we just keep uh, widening the gap, widening the gap, widening the gap, it'll be too late to catch up with them later on. We have got to win this game for Barcelona. It is so, so pivotal, especially with the other teams around us doing well so far. Now, if you take a look at our opponents in Real Sociedad and where they're currently standing in the league table, they are currently sat in sixth place in La Liga on three points after one game. Game, they won again nothing really much to say after that but they're doing they're on the right track they're on better form than Barcelona you could say that but so far in the league they've got off to a good start let's now take a look at our opponents in Real Sociedad like I mentioned so far in the league they got off to a good start picking up that first win but as you all know a game against Real Sociedad is always very difficult especially away in their stadium at the Anoeta but the last time we faced them last season was at the Anoeta and we did win 1-0. It was an early goal from pierre Amrik Aubameyang. If you don't remember this game, I'll summarize it for you guys quickly. We got a lucky goal and we just sat back and defended for our lives. I remember PK had a masterclass. We had a lot of injuries in that game. I think Danny Alves went off injured. I think a couple other players as well. Lab on the screen there, 4-3-3. Every single player in that lineup is still at Barcelona. Fairly decent team as well. You had a Batman and Ferran, the January acquisitions were already in. Dembele was on form. You had Gavi starting because I think Pedri was injured during that time. But PK, Jordi Alba, Busquets all starting in that match. It could be different this time. But again, that game for Barcelona is by getting the big three points. It was very, very, very tough. I think Ter Stegen had a worldly of a save as well near the end of the match. But again, we got lucky. But the most important thing is getting those three points. Back to now Real Sociedad. Let's take a look at their last games in all competition. Of course, including preseason. In the last match, it beat Cadez in the league 1-0. This is all preseason. 1-0 loss against Athletic Club. 2-1 loss against Ibar. 2-1 win against Bournemouth. 1-0 win against Osasuna. And a 1-1 draw with Borussia Mönchengladbach. So, preseason, we don't care about. Let's take a look at that first game in the league, which was, of course, a 1-0 win against Cadez away from home. Lineup, very, very simple for me. Associate that, it's always the same. 
four three one two could become a four two three one in transition as well they made some good signs as well we'll talk about that in the player watch section but in this match real associated that they played very very well very very compact and they dominated the midfield of course they didn't get that many goals you can say that alexander isaac the striker was not very clinical up front there were some chances created but not too much for him to you know pounce upon but again for real associated that this match was won for them in the midfield their midfield dominated the game and also they defended well as well so overall for cadets they could not match the intensity and the strength of Real Sociedad. So overall, final thoughts on Real Sociedad. They're a very, very strong team. Of course, one of the top teams in the league and they're very well managed by the manager, Emmanuel Alguacil. He's a legend for them. He's come out from their system as well. Won the Copa del Rey in 2020 when there was the uh, pandemic. They had that, you know, two Copa del Rey finals in a month. He won one of them. He's a legend for them and he also plays good football, high intensity, pressure, and depends a lot on counterattack as well, especially against the top teams, but overall, fantastic manager. But players to look out for for Real Sociedad, there is quite a bit. Firstly, Alex Ramiro in goal, decent goalkeeper, but I would say watch out for him on his feet. Can really pick out a long ball, very, very strong in that aspect. Their best defender, Le Norma, the French center back, he's done very well for them over the past few seasons. One of the most consistent players in the squad, keep an eye out for him. Their captain, Ilan Ramendi, of course he will come off the bench most likely, doesn't really start anymore because of his age, but off the bench, he has the technical quality still to compete in the league. One that I would look out for in this match for sure that you should all look out for as well, their midfielder, Zubi Mendy, who of course is being rumored to join Barcelona as the Busquets replacement. Keep an eye on him in this match for sure and see what you think about him. Their midfielder that Ronald Koeman was destined for for a year and a half now, Mikel Marino, very, very technical, very, very strong. Boss to boss midfielder, he does a job there for sure. One of their two new signings, Braez Mendez, of course, formerly from Celta Vigo. But remember, keep in mind as well, he was called up to the Spain national team, I think, in the last call up. Very, very technical footballer, very, very strong, great dribbling as well. I would say he's kind of, you know, Bruno Fernandes 2.0. Kind of looks like him as well, so keep your eyes on him. David Silva, you already know. Alexander Isaac, he hasn't been firing, I think, Isaac over the past year or so. I think he didn't even get double just last season in goals in the league, or if he did, it was just, you know, like 11, 12, maybe 13. He's been missing a lot of chances as well over the past year. That's why no one's bought him yet, of course. You heard us being rumored to be linked with him, Arsenal, other teams as well, but in the end, He's never been bought because, again, his finishing has not been that great over the past year. And finally, one of their other signs you should be familiar with, of course, Take Kubo, former Barcelona La Masia player. He played in the academy with Eric Garcia and Ansu Fati. He was bought by Real Sociedad from Real Madrid for 6 million euros. And he's done very well so far. Of course, in that match against Cadez, he scored the one and only goal. And he's been fantastic. Again, fantastic pace, fantastic dribbling, but a bit 50-50 on that finishing. I would say it's kind of, you know, like an Ousmane Dembele, but a bit, less, a bit lesser quality, but same pro profile. Good pace, good dribbling, a little bit suspect in that shooting. So again, a lot of places to look out for Real Sociedad. Again, they're such a strong team, great in the press and the intensity. But again, I would say watch out for two things. One, them winning the midfield battle because their midfield is quality. Marino, Zubimendi, uh, David Silva midfield has done fantastic so far. And also watch out for their counter attacks. So despite the fact that their best player Oyazabal is still injured out with the ACL on their counter attack, they are very, very strong. So Barcelona have to be strong in defense, win that midfield battle, and also finish our chances. If we get like three chances, we only score like one, maybe none of them, we're gonna be screwed in this game. So Barcelona stay strong in the midfield, have a strong defense, and of course, mainly finish the chances that you create. Let's now discuss some of the updates around La Liga registration. Of course, this will not become a regular theme in the match preview until the transfer window ends. Currently, the only Barcelona player who is not registered in La Liga is one of the new signings, of course, in Jules Conde. And the club now have 24 hours to register him in time so he can play in the Real Sociedad match or else he will not be able to play for another week. Now, Gerard Romero came out with a big update. He came out saying that Barcelona have told La Liga this morning that a player occupying a high salary will leave soon and a player with a medium salary will also leave soon as well. Aubameyang's exit is advanced and other departures Barcelona are working on like Memphis Depay, Umtiti and Braithwaite could materialize and Barcelona are working on registering both Jules Koundé and Marcus Alonso before Sunday. Through the exit of Aubameyang, the wage bill will be reduced by 9 million euros and through the exit of Depay, it will be reduced by 4.8 million euros while Jules Koundé will earn around 6.5 million euros and Alonso will be earning 3. So, theoretically, 
a Bam Yang's exit, just him alone, should be enough to register Kunde and Alonso. But of course, the club want to keep him. The only time that there's a good offer, of course, the Pai we're desperate to get rid of. But again, the Pai 4.8, his exit alone is not enough to register Jules Kunde at 6.5. Now, Victor Navarro from Cobas has come out saying that Barcelona need 22 million euros more to register Jules Kunde. It can only be done before Sunday if the departures of both Memphis Pai and Abamyang is done but the main objective is to register both Jules Koundé and Marcos Alonso before August the 31st. Now for me, that does make sense. I think the club want to register them, or more specifically Jules Koundé, because of course Alonso is not even a Barcelona player yet, on Koundé ASAP. Xavi wants to use him, Xavi wants to start him, we have got to register him. And of course, similar to Franck Kessier and Andreas Christensen, Koundé has a clause in his contract where he can walk for free if he's not registered, can the Serb come out saying that Jules Kunde has a clause in his contract which allows him to leave for free if he's not registered before August 31st? Of course, he may say no, I'll stay, I'll wait till September, I don't care or whatever, but he has the option to leave if he's not registered. Does not mean he will 100% leave, the option is there. Again, I don't know why I think the club will register him by tomorrow, I don't know how they'll do it, but... They always end up doing it. The club. They always get what needs. They always get done what needs to get done in time. Again, it looks like impossible. We need at least Memphis. I would say Memphis. We're hearing right now that Umtiti is on the verge of going out alone to Syria uh, as well. So maybe Memphis, Umtiti, and Braithwood. I think those three will be enough to register Kunde. Abamie, that deal so complicated. I cannot see it getting done in the next 24 hours. But I thought it could get done in the future. I don't know how the club are doing it. But I'm very, very confident they will do it somehow because in the end, Laporta does his magic. He gets stuff done last second, but the most important thing is that he gets it done. So we'll wait and see on Jules Kunde. Again, Chavi wants to use him in this match. But the question now is, is can he get registered in time? Time now to get into Chavi's press conference reaction. His press conference this morning, of course, has asked a lot of questions from the media about Jules Kunde, new signings, exit, anything you can think of. He was asked about it, so let's get now get in and see what he had to say in response to those big questions. He starts out by saying that La Real is a rival that does many things well. They are good, intense side. Our goal tomorrow is to win. On the registration of Jules Kunde, we are waiting right now. There is no news on Abamyang's exit. That Abamyang, we don't know what will happen right now. He's our player. He's important, but the circumstances will tell. Pretty much, if we get a good offer. He'll walk out. Then he was asked, do you need new signings? He said, at the moment, neither a Batman or Memphis have left. If there are offers for any of them, we'll see how the squad turns around. But right now, the club's priority is to register Jules Kunde and not to sign anyone. So again, of course, that makes sense. We have a 24-hour turnover. And in that next 24 hours, the club must register Jules Kunde for Chavi to be able to use him tomorrow. Then asked about the Busquets red card and who will replace him. He said that Busquets red card, I have players who can play there. Kessier, De Jong, Pienge, for example. But of course, you will have to wait tomorrow and see the lineup. He was then asked about Casemiro leaving Madrid to go to United. He said he's been an important player for them. They lose important players like this. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, why would you ask that question? I'm not even going to respond to that. Who freaking cares? Then asked about Ferran Torres. Of course, Ferran Torres has not played a single second of football yet this season. He was asked about his fitness, how he's training. Chavi uh, said, look, he's trained very well this week. He's focused and 100% involved. He will be a key player for us this season. He's also a goal scorer, but I see him more on the wing. But he has the ability to play in the middle as well. Is he hitting a Ferran playing a striker if he's still a Batman? I mean, oh my god, I, I don't want to see that. But, I mean, if it comes to it, worse comes to worse. Can I by saying, Chavi, that we are going to fight for everything this season. We have to be humble and work hard. Against Rayo Vallecano, we had to win, but we weren't clinical at all during that match. He didn't ask about the position of the team and where he needs strength and stuff like that. What do you want to sign? Right back, left back. You want a midfielder? You want a striker for Batman leads? He said that, look, my idea is are clear. The president and the sporting sector, Matteo Aleman, Jody Cruyff, know what I want and of course there is about one week left in the window and there is time to get everything done. He was then asked about Alejandro Bole, could he replace uh, Jody Alba, do we have to sign Marcos Alonso if he plays well? He said, that, look, I count on him, he's done a great preseason, I think Bale is a great player who's capable of competing with Jordi Alba. He then asked about his thoughts about the market closing at the end of the month and not when the league starts. He said, look, I've always thought the market should shut before the league starts, this is poorly organized and it doesn't make sense in my opinion, but you know what, this is a circumstance and we have to work with it. So Chavi thinks, similar to Arsene Wenger, that the market should close 
once the league starts for each domestic league. So we started, I think, on August 12th. So the window shuts for us on August 12th. For the Premier League, it's on August 5th. So for the Premier League, it shuts on August 5th. That's just his opinion. Then asked about free kicks. The O as a fetish of a free kick against Real Bayekano, who's your free kick taker. He said that, look, we practice our free kicks every single day in the training session. There is a big list. We have Lewandowski, Rafinha. Those are the only two names that he mentioned. And then he was asked about Jules Koundé's position on the pitch. That look, do you see Koundé as a center back or do you see him as a right back? He said, look, I prefer Koundé as a center back, but in an emergency option, he can do a job at right back. He was then asked about the right back position. Who do you want to sign there? There was mention of Juan Foyth, all that sort of stuff. He said this, and I felt like this is very, very interesting. That look, we want to sign as Pelicueta, and we couldn't. We'll have to see what we can do. We have players who can deck him in that position like that as well. We have Idaho who can play there. Roberto, Conde, worst case scenario. He's asked about deaths. The deaths, he knows his situation. First of all, dropping name dropping as Pelicueta is huge. As of course, now confirmed, clear as day. He wants to the right back, but saying for now I have to stick with, you know, Kunde, worst case scenario, Aroho, not natural, but can do a job. And of course, Roberto, and saying that that's no situation, he wants Dest out the door. He said that Kunde, by the way, is training very well. He's uh, great with the ball. I think we signed a very good player, but now we need to sell some players in order to register him. He was then asked about the possible loan of Pablo Torre. Very good question. I think it was Alberto Rocamari who asked this question. And Chavi said, look, this season is difficult for Pablo Torre because, of course, we're going to be playing every other day with the World Cup coming in. There's not that much training sessions in the first team, although Pablo Torre will train with the first team every single week. We value him as a player, but we are perhaps, we value also a loan move for Pablo Torre this summer. Of course, what we're hearing right now is that Pablo Torre will not go on loan. He's not thinking about it. He did not ask Chavi for it. But if he does ask Chavi, the club may advance that loan move because Chavi's thinking, look, He's not going to train that much with the first team because, of course, we're going to be playing uh, recovering and then we play a game, recover, one training session, game, recover, one training session. It's going to be like that consistent throughout the whole entire season with the World Cup coming in uh, during the season. He said that, look, he won't train that much. He won't play that much in the first team as well. And in those training sessions, of course, I do value him to be there to learn the Barcelona style, but perhaps a loan will be evaluated. So keep your eyes on Pablo Torre for that. He then asked about the pressure for the rest of the season to win trophies and with a good squad. He said, look, I feel the pressure is directly at me. And this is what I tell my players. The pressure is directly at me for now, but I want them to play without any fear. Finally, he's asked about Frankie Dion's future, more specifically where he'll play in the pitch. He's also asked about the possibility of Frankie Dion playing as a right back which I thought was a very very weird question he said that look Frankie De Jong is a spectacular player with a lot of leadership I see him more as an interior but he can also adapt in playing in the pivot but as a fullback I do not see him there which of course makes perfect sense and that concluded Chavi's press conference reaction to have the big match against Rio Sociedad at the Anueta tomorrow. Let's now get into the lineup predictions. We're going to start with the manager of course Chavi Hernandez. Now usually his lineups are very difficult to predict but we do have a leaked team coming in from Javi Miguel from AES who of course is very very close to Chavi. He's saying that this lineup on the screen right now will be the lineup that starts the match against Real Sociedad. It is Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Sergio Roberto, Jules Conde, Arujo, and Alejandro Balde with a midfield three of Mirlan Pjanic, Frankie de Jong, and Pedri, and a front three of Usman Dembele, Robert Lewandowski, and Rafinha. A lot of talking points. He's saying, having Miguel for the first time since December of 2020, none of the three veterans in Busquets, Pique, or Jordi Alba will start a league match for Barcelona. Of course, Busquets suspended. Pique, fifth choice center back, and Jordi Alba will be dropped. Okay, let's analyze this. Firstly, Ter Stegen, of course, back four. He's going to put Roberto in there. Of course, Aruha right back is a definite no no, and Jules Conde does not want to play there. And on Jules Conde, as of recording this video, he is still not registered. But if he does not get registered in time, it will most likely be Eric Garcia ahead of Andres Christensen. So keep your eyes on that. Aruho definitely starting. But for me, the most significant part of this lineup, in my opinion, is Alejandro Balde starting at left back after Jordi Alba's absolutely stinky performance against Rayo Vallecano. Xavi will drop him for Alejandro Balde. And for Alejandro, this is his chance. If he performs well, he could be the backup left back next season and we do not sign Marcus Alonso. But Alejandro Balde needs to have the performance of his life. Up and down that wing, 
maybe even grab an assist, but most importantly, up and down the wing, of course, but defend very, very well. This is Balde's chance. He does well. We may not sign Marcus Alonso. He'd be the backup for Jordi Alba. Could be even the start of the season. This is his chance. Now in the midfield, Pjanic, of course, is the direct replacement for Busquets. Now, despite not getting that many minutes in preseason, he will start alongside Frankie de Jong, who will come in on that right-hand side for Gabby after his great performance in the Juan Gamper and also in that second half against Raya Vallecano. Pedri, easy, no-brainer, and no change in the front three as well. No Ansu Fati, no Ferran Torres, and maybe even no Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. And that's the line that I think that Xavi Hernandez will select for this match, but of course, let me know in the comments below what you think Xavi will go with. Now I'm going to show you guys my lineup, what I would do if I was a Barcelona coach, and I have made three changes from Chavi's predicted lineup. And my lineup on the screen right now, I'd go Ter Stegen in goal, a back four of Des, Conde, Arujo, and Alejandro Balde, midfield three of Frankie Dion, Kessier, and Pedri, and a front three of Rafinha, Lewandowski, and Ansu Fati. So let me explain my, you know, thought process. Firstly, Kunde, I would start him if he's registered. If not, I would also go for Eric Garcia. I think alongside Eric Garcia and Arujo, you already have that partnership with, with, with Christensen, still needs to blend, and this is not the match where you want to do any sort of blending. Right back, I have gone with Des. I feel like I would also give Des the same chance for I hand the ball day. One last go. If you play well, maybe we could keep you. If you don't, if you don't play well, adios amigo, transfer list, push him out, accept it. That's what I would do personally. I think I think Roberto coming up against you know uh, Take Kubo, Alexander Isaac, it scares me quite a bit. So I would go Des City on the pace and also hopefully he'll defend well and also his dribbling as well could be a big asset. Alejandro Balde, thousand percent. I was going to drop for Jordi Alba, of course. Now into the midfield and that's where my second change comes in. I would bring in Kessier over Milan Pjanic for one simple reason: fitness. Pjanic has played, I believe. 145 minute and 120 minute throughout the whole entire preseason. Ain't no way in hell I'm starting him away at the Anahuata. At home, the Rey of Vallecano, different story. Away at Anahuata, hell no. With De Jong, I would start him as well. You could have Kessier and De Jong interchanging. I couldn't really decide who to pick there. I think De Jong will do their job better overall. I think Kessier on the right hand side of the midfield is probably, you could say, on the equal level of uh, De Jong, but putting Kessie in the, in the pivot, I think will be a di big difficult for him. Pedro on the left, of course, easy. In the front three as well. Now, I have dropped Dembele, not because he was bad, but for fitness. He had that hamstring fatigue after the match against Rio Vallecano. I ain't taking no risks. We have squad death for reason. I tell you, you know, Usman, take a breather. You went pretty intense in that Rio Vallecano match. I don't want any, you know, niggles, any injuries. I'll bring you on. Just start off on the bench, and I'll bring in Ansu Fati and put Rafinha on the right wing and also that Rafinha yo step up a bit because last match you're not that great and of course up front it is RL9 Robert Lewandowski and that's my number I would select for this match but of course let me know in the comments below would you rather pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup time now for my score prediction what do I believe the result will be in this match and I tell you what my arse is sitting right in the fence and I have gone with a 1-1 draw in this match look I believe Barcelona can definitely win this match, but I also believe that Real Sociedad can win this match as well. This for me will come down to Xavi's team selection and also his tactics on the day as well. I think if we perform well, high intensity, finish our chances, I'll be very confident we can beat Real Sociedad. But if we start sloppy like we did, like we did against Real Vallecano, don't finish chances, midfield all over the place. I think Real Sociedad can definitely capitalize. I think missing out on Busquets, very, very important. I think again with PK, Jordi Alba, who really cares? But I think Busquets is so vital to Chavi's system. And then bringing in Pianch, who most likely he will bring in on little to no minutes, is a big risk. So we'll wait and see. And again, it will be the first uh, game with none of the three captains. That could be a big blow for the uh, Barcelona players who have been here for a while. Like Pedri, Ansu, Dembele, Arujo. Not seeing, you know, PK, Busquets, or Jordi Alba. But seeing Sergio Roberto possibly could be a big blow to them mentally. But... I'm confident we can win, but my official purchase prediction will be a 1-1 draw. But of course, let me know your score predictions down in the comments below. So that was my match preview for Real Sociedad versus Barcelona in La Liga. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you leave a like. And of course, leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. But the main thing I want to firstly is your score prediction. And secondly, 
on those lineups. Firstly, would you pick my lineup or Chavi's lineup? What do you think Chavi would go with? What would you go with? You were the manager. Leave me all your thoughts down below. And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below as well if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the live watch along. Set the reminder on the screen and come and join me and watch the game with me. Follow me for the match by match review. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Big game ahead. Nothing but the three points. Take care and force the Barca. Oh,